Hi, this is Jenny and in this tutorial, I will teach you how to use a force polygon or you may call it a force diagram to determine the reactions um, on members of a mechanical system. For example, what we have in figure 1 right here, you have a mechanism that is linked at point B, C, A and there's a force acting at point D. Now I've laid out the summary of the steps required to draw your force polygon to use this method to determine the reactions at A, C, and B. All right. First of all, you may need to redraw the mechanism to scale. In this case, you would notice that the diagram right here may not be drawn to scale. So let's do that quickly right now. You may need to use your ruler and a piece of paper to draw them properly. In this video, I'll be sketching it using um, a free hand technique so it will not be accurate. So you have to do it on your own. Perhaps you could use a scale of 1 cm to 1 meters in this case. So in this, uh, in this distance here, C to B, this would be 2 cm and another 2 cm right here while wow, there's a 1.5 cm on the vertical axis right here. The next step is to identify a two point, two point force member to provide a force direction. So step two, if you look to look at the linkages right here, there are three points on CBD, but there are only two points from A to B. So immediately you would identify that the linkage at A to B, the, the simplest linkage that you could work on and let's draw this out separately right here. Now when you have a two point linkage, okay, you would notice that there's only one way to apply force onto it. All right? It could either be in tension or in compression. So in this case, let's try to guess in which direction these forces are acting on. Now you have noticed that there's a 0 0.6 kN acting at D. Okay, let me rewrite this 0 0.6 kN. And it is acting in the somewhat um, downwards, downward direction. So intuitively you would know that this would cause a compression onto member A and B. Alright, so the external forces that will be acting on A B would be pressing against each other. So it's either moving outwards in tension or inwards towards the linkage in compression. In this case, it's under compression. But what I'd like you to notice is that the forces are always acting in this direction, in this angle. All right. So let's put that angle, that line of um, force back into your diagram right here. And with that, we have done step three, which is to transfer the force direction from AB to the related three force member at CBD. So we're done with step three and let's move on to step four. Okay. Now step four is based on the fact that we know that um, if you recall your equations of equilibrium, okay, sum of moment at any point equals to zero, sum of forces in the x uh, in the y direction equals zero and sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero, this condition would apply for a static system, which means in this case, the system is not rotating or moving anywhere. All right. So we're going to make use of this fact that we know um, sum of moment at one single point is equal to zero at a concurrent point. All right. So in this case, let's find another direction of force, which we already know. Okay. From 0 0.6, let's extend it. Okay, use your ruler to, to do this. And it happens to meet at this particular point. Let's call this star. All right, I'm just going to draw a star right there. So this common point right here, which we denote by star, okay, is found right above D and connected to the, the line that goes along point A and B. So the next step is to look for the direction of force that's acting on point C and connect that to the concurrent point. 
Okay, so draw a straight line from point C towards star. So at this very special point, you know that the sum of moment of all these forces acting on C, B, and D would be equal to zero. Now, with these lines drawn on members C, B, and D, we now know the direction of the reactions, the resultant direction of um, the force that's acting on C, the reaction forces at C and B. We can measure off the angle at these points. So right here, let me define this angle. Let's call this angle theta C. And over here, let's call this angle theta B. Okay. Or you could call it theta A, since A and B, the, the forces that's acting on A and B are along the same direction on this angle. But let's keep it as theta B, because over here, this is also theta B. So now that we know the direction of these forces, we can now move on to draw the force polygon. Moving on to the next step right here, you would need to use a different scale. So in this case, let's um, try to use a scale of um, 1 cm to perhaps 0 0.1 kilonewton. I found that this scale is appropriate as uh, we know a value of 0 0.6 from here at point D. And now we are ready to draw your force polygon for member CBD. Now the reason why we are drawing a force polygon for member CBD is because there are three points of forces acting on it and things gets a bit more complicated. Now once again you will need your paper, pencil and your own ruler to redraw the force polygon using the scale that I've recommended or you could enlarge the scale to get um, a, a more accurate force polygon. Now in this case we are able to use the force polygon because of the fact that we know that this member CBD is not going to rotate or move anywhere. So back to your um, equations of equilibrium, all right? You know that um, sum of forces in the y direction and x direction are equals to zero. So because of this fact, you can now close the loop of the force polygon, and to use it to measure off the reactions, the basically the values that you're looking for. Okay. So moving on. Now, if I were to use this scale, okay, what I need you to do now is to draw a line for about 6 centimeters downwards since 0 0.6 kilonewton is actually moving downwards that will be force at point D okay let's call it call this point D and label this as 0 0.6 kilonewton which is equivalent to 6 cm in my diagram right the next thing to do is to transfer let's move on to forces acting at B which is the same as the direction um, of forces acting at AB. So we are going to continue on by drawing this force, okay? And make sure that you have got the same angle. Okay, now you don't know where it would stop, but let me just define this angle. You should copy the same angle theta B. Measure it with a protractor and draw this line. And then the next thing to do is to transfer this theta C right here so that we can complete the entire force polygon. There are only three forces that, so there will be three lines on your force polygon. So angle theta C is a bit not, not as steep. Okay, Make sure that you have transferred theta C here using your protractor and you notice that they meet at a certain point so this is the point that determines the full range of your force polygon now you have noticed that this direction goes down so it means that forces on B would be acting in this direction and it comes back to where you started so forces on point C okay Let's call this RC, RB, and this is the forces at D. This would come downwards. So there you have your complete force polygon for member CBD. Moving on to step 4, 
Now what you could do is to measure off the resultant reaction at RB. Alright, so take your ruler and measure this distance. What is this distance? And convert it back. Okay, this will be in cm. Convert it back to kilonewtons using your scale right here. So similarly, I would need you to measure this distance and this would give you a resultant force for RC. Once again, measure it off with your ruler and convert it back to kilonewtons. The values for RB should come to about 2 kilonewton and the value for RC should come up to about 1.7 kilonewton. Now the reason why I, I've said it's about these values is because the force diagram may not give you a 100% accurate um, values of the reactions, but it should be approximately close to it. It's a very quick way of determining these reactions, but it is still not as accurate as doing your calculations by analysis. Now, um, what do we mean by Rb is equivalent to 2 kN? Typically, you would find that in your calculations, you would um, calculate values such as Rby and R bx. How do you obtain these values? Now rby is the vertical component of rb which means you could take 2 kN, multiply with sine of theta b. Alright so this came from rb and rbx would be once again 2 kN multiply with this time cosine because it is a horizontal axis of rb. So similarly for RC, right? If you were to, uh, if you like to determine what is the value of RCY, it would be one point seven kilonewton multiplied with sine theta c, which came from here, and the other th theta b is right here, right? So RCX would be one point seven kilonewton multiplied with cosine of theta c, and you have gotten the values that you're more familiar with. So these are the, um, this, this were the resultant values for RB and RC, while these are the components in the horizontal and vertical axis of those resultant reactions.